you just talked about divorce. So that's the, the easy, obvious example of why one of our clients should care about understanding what's community and what's separate. Because if you get divorced, that's all going to have to get fleshed out. And right. so that's it's important to know from that standpoint. But there are other reasons why it's important to clients to understand what's separate and what's community. Yeah. So the big thing would be is when somebody dies, which is what we're in the business of, That's not our typically business. in the business yeah. of divorce, but that is if somebody dies and they don't have an estate plan, there are intestacy laws. We talk about that. There's a plan for your assets. If you die, if you don't have a plan, the law has a plan, but that plan is different for community property than it is for separate property. So right. um, when you die, your community property goes hundred percent to your, the surviving spouse. If you uh, don't, have you, a written plan that says otherwise. Right. You have no documents right. <laughs> when you die. Your community property generally goes to your spouse. Your separate property is going to depend on whether or not you have children or siblings. I think it goes out to siblings. If you die and you have a child, half of your separate property goes to your child and the other half goes to your spouse. If you have two children, your two children or more, I should say, your children get two thirds and your spouse gets one third of the separate property. Right. And if you don't have kids, I believe, and you have siblings, then they get half or, or a third. Or like, parents. Or parents. Yeah. 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 It only goes that far. It would only go out that far. Yeah. And then it would all go to the spouse if there isn't any more close relatives. But right. um, it's not going to go to your first cousins. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But the important point is that that probably isn't in many cases what the decedent would have wanted for spouse and children to co-own the house that the spouse lives in. That's yeah. a usually not a good result. Especially but, if it's not that spouse's child. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Most especially. Yes. So it's important. It's very important to understand that, you know, just because you're married, that doesn't mean California probate code estate plan is going to work the way you think it will. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of Absolute Trust Talk Live. If you enjoyed listening in, then don't forget to subscribe. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you may listen by searching Absolute Trust Talk. While you're there, we would also love for you to leave us a review. And then why not share your favorite episodes with family, friends, or colleagues too? You can find all of our shows and corresponding show notes by visiting AbsoluteTrustCouncil.com. You'll also find a variety of other free resources, including our ebooks, videos, blogs, presentations, and more. If you need help with your estate planning or administration, we also offer a free discovery call to help get the process started. You can find more information on booking your session by visiting AbsoluteTrustCouncil.com slash scheduling. Don't forget to keep an eye out for our next live episode. If you join us for the broadcast, you can submit questions during the show. But if not, don't worry. You can always get in touch with us by sending a quick message to info at AbsoluteTrustCouncil.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you soon.